Most talk show hosts seem pleasant when the cameras are on, but it's a different story when no one's watching. These TV hosts were completely different people when the cameras were off. Tucker Carlson built one of the most loyal followings in Fox News history as the host of Tucker Carlson Tonight. The show launched in 2016, which was also the year that Donald Trump won the presidency. As a result, Carlson's show became a major platform for the new president, with Trump granting Carlson exclusive interviews throughout his time in office. However, Carlson has been criticized throughout his career for his hateful commentary, which included aspects of white nationalism. The combined membership of every white supremacist organization in this country would be able to fit inside a college football stadium? In countless segments on a show, Carlson called for major changes to the government, and according to The Guardian, some of these changes equated to fascism. Carlson's heavy-handed commentary eventually led to his downfall. In 2023, the Fox star was dropped without warning after the network lost a $787 million defamation case. Since then, Carlson has largely existed as an online presence, with a new show that streamed exclusively on X, formerly known as Twitter. Carlson has pushed conspiracy theories on his new show, including one segment where he claimed Barack Obama had a gay affair and smoked crack cocaine. Thankfully for Carlson, even in exile, he's remained one of Trump's favorite interviewers. When the former president decided to skip the GOP primary debate in August of 2023, he set up a simultaneous interview for himself on Carlson's ex-show. During Trump's appearance, Carlson wildly claimed that the 45th president was an assassination target. So do you think it's possible that there's open conflict? And we seem to be moving I, I towards something. I don't know. I don't know. As a host of Fox's The O'Reilly Factor, Bill O'Reilly was known for his fiery monologues about the state of the nation, as well as his sneering interviews with various political figures. By 2016, O'Reilly was the most popular host on Fox News, and set the template for the network's firebrand style of news commentary. So, few could have predicted the nature of O'Reilly's downfall. In 2017, the New York Times reported that O'Reilly's team had spent tens of millions of dollars to settle various sexual assault complaints made against the host. For his part, O'Reilly denied any wrongdoing. This was a hit job a political and financial hit job. But as Fox began hemorrhaging advertisers in the wake of the scandal, pressure grew to remove the primetime star from the network. Finally, in April 2017, the network released a statement that said O'Reilly would not be returning to the Fox News channel. Charlie Rose had been a constant figure on American television for decades by the time his fortunes changed. By late 2017, the Me Too movement had gained considerable steam, particularly after the deluge of sexual assault accusations against Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein. In November of 2017, the Washington Post published an expose in which eight women claimed Rose had sexually harassed them. The encounters reportedly occurred between 1994 and 2011. A day after the story was published, CBS News announced that Rose had been fired from the network. A once familiar face in New York's popular restaurants, Rose has since retreated to his sprawling home in Bellport, New York, and is only rarely seen in public. The day after the Washington Post story was published, Rose's former colleague Gail King said on CBS This Morning, I am not okay. What do you say when someone that you deeply care about has done something that is so horrible? I'm really grappling with that. In November 2017, Matt Lauer, the long-running co-host of The Today Show, was fired by NBC. As I'm sure you can imagine, we are devastated and we are still processing all of this. Lauer's abrupt firing came after an internal investigation following a complaint from a female colleague. Variety later published an exclusive feature that claimed Lauer had sexually harassed multiple female colleagues. According to the piece, Lauer had allegedly exposed his genitals, made lewd remarks, and in one incident, bought a co-worker a sex toy. Then, in 2019, investigative journalist Ronan Farrow published his book Catch and Kill, Lies, Spies, and a Conspiracy to Protect Predators. In the book, Farrow shared testimony from Lauer's former NBC colleague Brooke Nevels, who claimed that the Today Star had raped her. Lauer later admitted publicly to having an extramarital affair with Nevels while covering the 2014 Sochi Olympics, but said that all physical contact was consensual. Farrow's book also claimed that Harvey Weinstein used his knowledge of Lauer's sexual misconduct to keep stories about himself from being broadcast. In America, Pierce Morgan is known as a one-time judge on America's Got Talent and as the former host of CNN's Pierce Morgan Live, which was dropped from the network in 2014. Before his TV career in the States, however, Morgan had a remarkable and controversial career as a print journalist in his native UK. It was there that he made a name for himself at the age of 28 by becoming the editor-in-chief of the now-defunct News of the World tabloid. While Morgan's unorthodox editorial style meant that he was able to supply his readers with bombshell stories day after day, he gained a reputation for bending rules and ignoring journalistic standards. For instance, Morgan attempted to purposefully smear rival journalists, including Private Eye editor Ian Hislop, with whom he had clashed on the British TV show Have I Got News For You. 
In his newspaper, Morgan advertised openly for people to contact him with any dirt they had on his lap that might cause him embarrassment. But worst of all are claims that Morgan oversaw the systematic phone hacking of public figures to uncover stories. As of 2023, an investigation is ongoing into how much Morgan knew about the hacks on major celebrities as well as the families of murder victims. I said, I've never hacked a phone. I've never told anyone to hack a phone. Don Imus, who died in 2019, set the template when it came to over-the-top radio broadcasting. During the decades his widely syndicated show Imus in the Morning was on the air, Imus' unpredictable style never wavered. However, the broadcaster seemingly showed his true colors in 2007 when he used a racial slur to refer to the Rutgers University women's basketball team. Imus apologized, but for his critics, that wasn't enough. Imus was often compared in the later part of his career with Howard Stern, a fellow radio shock jock. However, when Imus's career seemed ready to implode, Stern condemned Imus. On his radio program, Stern discussed Imus's history of using racist language, telling his listeners, if there's a blackened core of a human being, that's Imus. He then suggested Imus's popularity with the public was exaggerated. Nonetheless, Imus was back on the air within months. David Letterman became a huge cult figure following the debut of NBC's Late Night with David Letterman in 1982, and one of the biggest names on Late Night after his move to CBS in 1993. Letterman was known for his ironic sense of humor and was also an acerbic interviewer. In 2009, however, Letterman's bad behavior came to light when it was revealed that he had been having affairs with young women on his staff. Letterman came clean by admitting to the affairs on his show and also apologized to both his wife and the women involved. At the time the scandal broke, Letterman received far more support than criticism. But, as noted by Vice, his behavior appears deeply problematic in retrospect, particularly because he practiced sexual favoritism by promoting the women he had liaisons with. As a current host of NBC's The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon maintains a consistently cheerful tone in nearly every interview and segment, but a 2023 bombshell report in Rolling Stone magazine tells a different story, suggesting that Fallon is a completely different person off-camera, especially when interacting with his co-workers. In the piece, journalist Christy Lee Andoli shared the testimony of two Tonight Show staffers and 14 former employees, who claim that Fallon is a difficult and erratic star. Though the show's remained a runaway success since Fallon took over in 2014, those interviewed claim that The Tonight Show has a toxic work environment, with much of the tension dependent on the type of mood the star is in. Outsiders have pointed to the turnover of nine showrunners in as many years as evidence of the chaos. One interviewee told the magazine, Nobody told Jimmy no. Everybody walked on eggshells, especially showrunners. You never knew which Jimmy we were going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. Look how many showrunners went so quickly. We know they didn't last long. Rolling Stone later reported that Fallon had since apologized to those involved. The Ellen DeGeneres Show began airing in 2003 and was notable for being as friendly as it was funny, with Be Kind being the show's recurring mantra. However, the show received an unexpected blow in 2020, when BuzzFeed News reported that the atmosphere of kindness promoted on screen wasn't present when the cameras were off. The outlet alleged that DeGeneres and her show's producers did nothing to address the toxic work environment that negatively impacted the mental health of several staffers. DeGeneres later apologized on air, but the show lost viewers and never fully recovered. In 2022, The Ellen DeGeneres Show came to an end after 19 seasons. Since he previously worked as a surgeon, it seemed to many that Dr. Oz's medical advice was grounded in reality. That said, as the Dr. Oz show grew in popularity in the 2010s, the blessing of America's doctor could make or break a particular drug or treatment, whether studies backed up its efficacy or not. But even in the early years of Oz's public life, medical experts began sounding the alarm over his willingness to promote quack treatments, such as homeopathy and the intervention of psychics. Meanwhile, Scientific American has condemned Oz as a purveyor of pseudoscience and misinformation, who is more interested in making a profit than helping people. The magazine notes that some of Oz's cures, such as his suggestion of taking hydroxychloroquine to combat COVID-19, are actively harmful. In the early years of his career, CNN's Don Lemon was lauded for the quality of his reporting, but Lemon's career took a hit in February 2023 that he never recovered from. While co-hosting CNN This Morning, Lemon claimed that Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley was no longer in her prime, even though Haley was 51 at the time. Nikki Haley isn't in her prime. Lemon then went on to pronounce that a woman's prime years were their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Lemon's comments quickly drew outrage, resulting in his absence from the next day's show. But the bad press against Lemon only got worse, and in April 2023, Variety ran a story detailing numerous problematic incidents from throughout his career, particularly acts of aggression toward women. In one instance, Lemon was accused of sending threatening text messages to his former CNN co-anchor Kira Phillips. Shortly after the Variety piece was published, CNN announced that Lemon had been fired. However, since Lemon still had three years left on his contract, it's believed he will still receive a substantial payout from the network. 
The British comedy actor James Corden was a respected stage and screen performer in the early 2000s, but only made a huge splash in the US when he became the host of The Late Late Show in 2015. Under his stewardship, the show maintained the silly style that viewers had grown accustomed to, and segments such as carpool karaoke often went viral. In 2022, Corden announced that he would be leaving the show in 2023 to spend more time with his family. However, the announcement coincided with a seismic reputational shift for Corden. In recent years, lurid stories about Corden's off-screen behavior began shaping how the public perceived him, one in particular in which the owner of a popular London restaurant accused Corden of being an abusive customer spread across the internet like wildfire. Corden was also criticized as being difficult by a former colleague, according to the News International. InfoWars owner and host Alex Jones has always been on the fringe when providing discourse on current affairs. Still, the far-right conspiracy theorist was once accepted by his audience. As strange as it seems now, Jones was previously featured in the Richard Linklater film Waking Life and would occasionally be the opening act for comedian Doug Stanhope. But in the years since, Jones's anti-establishment shtick has gone from seemingly harmless to downright vile. That said, the most headline-worthy of the unfounded claims he has made on Infowars concern the 2012 shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. According to Jones, the shooting, in which 20 children were killed, was staged by the government. Uh, you know, it has now come out that um, it was a government program. Jones went on to say that the shooting was the first phase in a secret plan by the government to separate Americans from their guns. Jones also claimed that the parents of the murdered children were crisis actors who were complicit in the sham, which was, of course, another lie. But Jones's lies were more than just sensationalized headlines for his hardline viewers. They also led to dangerous real-world consequences. As the families of those who died at Sandy Hook would later attest, the conspiratorial nonsense that Jones repeatedly spouted led to them being the targets of harassment, abuse, and death threats. The affected families subsequently sued Jones for defamation and won. The InfoWars founder now has to pay nearly $1.5 billion in damages to the families of the Sandy Hook victims. Jones has since filed for bankruptcy. The name Jeremy Kyle isn't particularly well known in the US, but ask any Brit and they will tell you that Kyle is known for a trashy form of daytime programming that makes the Jerry Springer show look lighthearted. The Jeremy Kyle show involved members of the British public discussing infidelity, betrayal, addiction, and various other scandalous topics. However, the added appeal of the show was Kyle himself, who would often chastise his guests for their moral failings. As a result, the Jeremy Kyle show felt less like public therapy and more like a kangaroo court. The infamous show was a constant presence on British TV for many years. But amid sustained criticism that the show intentionally courted participants' distress for pure entertainment, tragedy struck when a former guest committed suicide. Accounts of mistreatment by the show's producers and news of another death related to the show convinced the broadcaster ITV to drop Kyle in 2019. From the mid-1980s until he died in 2021, the conservative radio broadcaster and commentator Rush Limbaugh enjoyed a huge following. Toward the end of his life, he mingled with some of the biggest figures in the Republican Party, including President Trump, who awarded Limbaugh the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2020. But not everyone agrees that Limbaugh was a worthy voice in American public life. Numerous critics have characterized the talk radio host as sexist and racist. One particularly egregious moment in Limbaugh's career occurred in 2012 when he decided to attack Sandra Fluke, a student at Georgetown Law. Fluke, a campaigner for women's rights, had advocated for easier access to contraception for students. In response, Limbaugh called her several slurs before adding, she's having so much sex she can't afford the contraception. This is historically the kind of language that is used to silence women. However, even some conservative commenters admitted that they were uncomfortable with the effect Limbaugh's legacy had on the political right. Former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh told NPR that he blames Limbaugh for normalizing misinformation in the Republican Party, stating, Rush Limbaugh began this. Rush Limbaugh's legacy, sadly, because he was immensely talented, but his legacy will be primarily lying to his audience. Tyra Banks is undoubtedly a big personality. Banks' charm and charisma were responsible for the Tyra Banks show winning back-to-back -back daytime Emmys in 2008 and 2009. But the thing Banks is most famous for is America's Next Top Model, which she created and executive produced. The show was a network smash for both the United Paramount Network and The CW and remained a cult favorite after its 2018 finale. However, in recent years, former fans have looked back at the show, and Banks' role in particular, and have been forced to reevaluate. Despite being a talent show, America's Next Top Model featured countless moments in which Banks and the other judges criticized contestants for their weight and sexuality. As reported by Business Insider, some allege that Banks' show also exposed contestants to unsafe working conditions and emotional trauma. But perhaps the most damning episode in the ongoing backlash against America's Next Top Model is the story of Angelie Preston, who had told producers she had previously worked as an escort. Preston later sued Banks in the show, claiming that she had been disqualified because of her past, though the suit was later dropped in 2018. 
Furthermore, when old clips of America's Next Top Model took the internet by storm in 2020, Banks took to acts to apologize for the show's insensitivity. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.